Echoes of the past are everywhere in Gibraltar. Its history is worn with pride. The ceremony of the keys, a regular ritual, a reminder of military traditions. So, the fort is safe and secure and also it's hard. It is an intensely patriotic place, profoundly aware of its identity. We do have, as you see, the bobbies dressed as in the UK, our red pillar boxes. We are irreversibly British. Our nature and our nurture is British. And yet, anybody who arrives at Gibraltar will somehow think, oh my goodness, this isn't Little Britain, is it? <laughs> it is also a complex identity, a diverse society at a crossroads after centuries of uneasy relations with its nearest European neighbour because of Brexit. Its strategic position at the gateway of the Mediterranean means it has been fiercely contested ever since, including a blockade imposed by Spanish dictator General Franco between 1969 and 1982. It's claimed that in the 18th century, the monkeys that live here foiled an attack by the Spanish by making so much noise, it woke up the British below. Ever since then, the legend has gone that as long as the monkeys remain on the rock, the British will remain in Gibraltar, and Gibraltar will remain British. The macaques are part of Gibraltarian identity, as is the long-standing physical division with their northern neighbour. That border tells Gibraltarians, in no uncertain terms, that Gibraltar is not Spanish. And the border also avoids any slippage into Spain. Identity is generated on the presence of a border and on the knowledge that Gibraltar will remain British. What is, for Gibraltarians, the most important thing that comes out of these, or could come out of these negotiations? That there's no erosion of British sovereignty and that this erosion is not reflected in, in how the border is managed. That trumps economic concerns. Clearly it does at some level because despite the fact that Gibraltar voted to remain in Europe uh, overwhelmingly, it, it, it leaves Europe with Britain, knowing full well that this is damaging for Gibraltar. And so despite sharing a land border with an EU state and voting overwhelmingly in favour of Remain, 96% on a huge turnout, the Gibraltarian government is committed to following the UK and leaving the EU. Uh, temper tantrums don't get you anywhere in politics. Understanding uh, that uh, people need to move on in democracy and not dwell on a result from 2016 every day and delivering a reality day to day which is better than what Brexit could have been for Gibraltar and working to improve it even further is what the people of Gibraltar pay me to do. They don't pay me to go to London and throw my toys out of the pram and in that way totally alienate the British government forever. But you must be quite tempted to at points. It must be difficult. I'm 50. I left my pram behind with its toys about 48 years ago. The pace of life here in Gibraltar is gentle relaxed and patience has been needed with negotiations still underway nearly seven years after the Brexit referendum. That is the Spanish town of La Ligna and every day thousands of people cross in both directions to shop, to work, to see their families and how open, how free-flowing that border is, is absolutely at the heart of these negotiations. It's also crucial for businesses like Ciccone and Speed They've sold wine on the rock for nearly 200 years and, by their own admission, want the best of both worlds. We need to, to come to an agreement somewhere in the middle in terms of how the, the borders are going to operate. If not a status quo of what it was before, but we need a, an agile uh, border, a workable border in practice where we can get the goods in, where there's an element of control so anything under the sun just doesn't flood in. Is there any unanimity on what kind of deal people want? Um, the finance industry and the gaming companies who depend on workers and all that, they need a free-flowing frontier. They're not that much concerned on the commercial side of the border, as we are. The only thing every business agrees on is that uncertainty is bad for business. You cannot plan for what you don't know, so um, had we known, like, we've been in, in, in this limbo for, for a couple of years and had we known what was uh, in store for us or what we had to prepare for, 
we could plan ahead. But not knowing, we have to plan for all sorts of scenarios. The question of the border is just as pressing for their Spanish neighbours. La Línea is a town down on its luck. The unemployment rate here is high. It's thought a third of people are out of work. Now, La Línea and Gibraltar are inextricably linked. It's thought that if there is a deal that makes the border difficult to cross, it's here that will suffer most. Jose has made the same journey to work for 30 years. Sometimes the crossing takes minutes, sometimes hours. For him, the best option is clear. I would like that the, the border disappear, you know. And I don't, I don't care if that is English or is UK or is French, I don't care. I, I, we would like to live together and have a, a pleasant life, that's all. That's all. About politics, we don't care about politics. You know? We would like is to live in peace and, to, you know, you see the level of life, the economy of that place, and we are, we are not aspire to, to be the same, but level it a bit, because the, the, the figures, the economy figures, are very, very different between one side to the other. You know? We have two fortresses, and uh, between the fortresses, a line of fortifications, okay? And it's the line. La Línea, there La we linea. are. <laughs> que solo cruzaran la frontera 10.000 personas. Si se tardara 5 segundos en controlar el pasaporte, eh, la cola sería de 13 horas <laughs> para entrar y de 13 horas para salir. O sea, sería un cataclismo y las repercusiones económicas serían brutales. La forma de ver eh, las relaciones entre Gibraltar y España desde el punto de vista de Gibraltar Eh, fue con el cierre de la frontera en 1969. Esa situación creo que generó una cierta eh, preocupación, una cierta cierto no fiarte de lo que pudiera ser la parte española. La situación ahora es muy distinta. España es una democracia consolidada, no es una dictadura militar. So for you it's time for Gibraltar to move on from its history. Estamos en el año 2023. Creo que es el momento también de pasar páginas de cosas que pasaron hace ya más de 50 años. It has been three years since Gibraltar left the EU. The negotiations about a permanent deal are still rumbling on. The talks are officially between the UK and EU. But it is the chief minister, when the day comes, who will have to sell a deal, or perhaps no deal. What we cannot bring is a pre-Brexit reality as a result of a no-negotiated outcome post-Brexit. So it's going to be difficult, it's going to be uncomfortable in some ways, but even a negotiated outcome is going to be uncomfortable in some ways. Are you not being slightly diplomatic in saying it would be uncomfortable? It would be catastrophic, wouldn't it? I'm not a diplomat, I'm a politician. I tell it as it is, but let's be very clear. There are opportunities in a no-negotiated outcome as well. You know, I remember talk about London becoming Singapore on Thames. Well, look, Gibraltar is not looking to become Singapore on the Straits of Gibraltar, but there are opportunities. Even you're not in the EU regulated space, if you become Singapore on Straits. So in a way, that's a sort of warning to Brussels, isn't it? I'm not here to threaten, I'm not here to warn, I'm not here to cajole. I'm here to ensure that I do my best for the people of Gibraltar. I think our best efforts should be directed at having a treaty between the United Kingdom and the European Union on Gibraltar. I think that's in everybody's interests. But if there is no treaty, of course Gibraltar has to explore what opportunities there are for it to do business around the world in a less regulated environment that we might be in if we have a treaty with the EU. There is no cliff edge in these negotiations. Gibraltar and Spain could, in theory, carry on as they are at the moment. But there is a very real deadline looming when La Línea and the rest of Spain elect a new government at some point this year. Nos podemos encontrar con la situación de que en España habrá elecciones en torno a noviembre, diciembre de este año y no sabemos exactamente qué eh, va a pasar. Si entra el Partido Popular solo, que no lo creo, pues bueno, puede haber cierta voluntad negociadora, pero con Vox Todo se complicaría muchísimo, muchísimo. For the Gibraltarians, this all comes down to sovereignty. 
issues that to outsiders might seem insignificant, like having Spanish border guards at Gibraltar's airport, are red lines for many on the rock. Spain's foreign minister recently said they were very close to a deal, but it's not guaranteed. It means moments like this are all too precious for Sharon, who lives in La Linea, and her boyfriend Alex, who is with the Royal Navy, based just off Gibraltar. We can't see each other as much we see now, so it's going to be like so difficult to continue with the relation, or we could have problems. So, and for my work, it's going to be so bad because I could be late always. And for the people that live in La Linea and have to cross the border, or the people that live in Jeep and have to go to La Linea because they live there, it's going to be so difficult. For people like James and Mackie, there are other concerns. They struggle with the high cost of living here in Gibraltar. They had planned to rent somewhere in La Linea, where it's much cheaper. That may no longer be an option. What a lot of people uh, used to do was get a house in La Linea because you could pay 350, 500 euros, like some, a range of that, and you can get yourself even a three bedroom house. Yeah. And it's, it was affordable, it's, it was an easy option. Yeah, it was cheap, affordable, it was close to home. Whereas if we try to do that now, you have to get two stamps a day, one to get in and one to get out. And there's only so much pages you have. And working from Jib and living in Spain is very hard at the moment. It's very hard to do that. The history of Gibraltar, of this place, is unavoidable. It's everywhere you go. It's on the streets, it's on the signs, it's on the businesses. But that sense of history is also in these negotiations. It's in the red lines, it runs through them that are set out by the government and come in many ways from the people here. And these negotiations are crucial because they will determine the future of this place, of its people, and it's a future that feels to many very uncertain.